Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Moldy Worm 4975 and today we're back in SnowRunner for another speed run today. We're going to be taking another vehicle through the Michigan speed run and this is a brand new vehicle that only got added on Tuesday. It is the Chevrolet Apache 6x6 and I've got it here in the store. It looks absolutely awesome. Now this car is a little bit of a con because even if you own the season pass you do have to purchase this as a separate DLC add-on. It costs £3.29 on the PlayStation Store and on the Xbox Store as well and uh, I'm not sure what that is in US dollars. It's roughly about $4. So not really that expensive. It is a really cool truck um, but it is a little bit of a shame that we didn't get this included in the season pass. But anyway, I've gone ahead and bought the thing it looks absolutely awesome if you do buy it you don't need to um, go and buy it in the game you get given one for free already but in case you're wondering it does cost $42,000 in game um, so that's enough about the vehicle uh, I'll show you all the route um, that we're going to be taking in a minute it's the same route that we took with the warthog in the last speedrun episode um, so if you've seen that then you can skip to the time trial, but we need to go ahead and uh, customize the Chevrolet Apache first So let's hop straight into it now. I believe there is quite a few upgrades for this Have to say it's a pretty awesome looking truck as well So let's hop into it the standard power to weight ratio is C plus which is not great if I'm honest So we're gonna go ahead and put in the double a T V8 um, oh, sorry, 8 valve 5.2 custom that raises it to B plus so that raises it quite a bit We're gonna stick the snow runner gearbox in so we have low plus and minus We can't actually change the suspension on this, um, but it is already very high uh, Lifted as you can see it has 42 inch tires on this thing uh, So that's absolutely uh, sorry 44 inch tires my bad um, we can get these all-terrain tires. We've got three different ones of those All the usual tires then we've got the off-road tires which it comes with as standard these look really nice We've got that little white wall bit um, Unfortunately, they aren't great in the mud and uh, We are gonna need the mud tires on it today for today's challenge Then we have the mud tires here 44 inch mud uh, uh, MS ones um, Not the nicest looking tire. I'm gonna be honest uh, and the rims are also a little bit Boring I do like these uh, Off-road rims a bit more, but anyway, uh, and then we can also get the chained tires there if you're running this thing in one of the snow maps um, Then we go on to the winch. We've got all the usual stock um all the usual scout winches sorry including the autonomous scout winch which i am going to put on this thing we have got a couple of frame add-ons so we've got this massive roof rack um repair supplies we've got some wheels on there so we've got 150 repair parts four spare wheels even though there's actually only two on there and we've got 120 liters of fuel and then you can also go for the trunk repair supplies which has 150 repair parts two spare wheels even though there's only one in there and 80 liters of fuel i'm not going to go for the massive roof rack because i don't think we're going to need that much fuel um, but i am going to chuck the trunk repair supplies in there you can get a couple of snorkels so you can get the tall front facing or the short round cap I don't really like either of those that one looks slightly better so we'll go for that in the visual stuff there are a couple of bumpers so you can get this mud flaps one which has this massive bar going across the back and add some big flappy mud flaps it looks really nice actually I do like that then you can go for tow loops it's basically just a version of the mud flaps one without the mud flaps then we've got the dual pipe and the stock one i think the stock one actually looks the best to be honest 
um, obviously it's made for this truck it looks really nice so I'm not going to change that on the roof we can go for an external horn there on the right we can go for dual um, external horns on the roof we can get some fog lights on this thing we can get those or those and we can get an angled sun visor um, I think the sun visor actually does look quite good and I'm going to go for the roof fog lights if you've not seen one of my snowrunner episodes so far then you know I absolutely love putting fog lights on I don't know why it's just I, I just love fog lights I think they look awesome but anyway uh, on to the front bumpers we've got the angled front bumper which literally looks like they've taken it off a semi truck and bolted it on the front that looks really stupid I do not like that at all um, we've got the hunter which again looks a little bit dumb to be honest um, I don't like the cables going up to the roof we've got the heavy duty pipe which is just a more extreme version of that and we have the stock Apache there I like just the stock one it looks nice and clean it gives us the most ground clearance and um, it does give us um, sort of a better angle for going up hills and stuff as well and then onto the rims we've got these patchy rims I actually forgot to change the tires so let's just go back and uh, change those we need the mud tires on today so we'll change that and then if we go down to rims these are the only rims you can get unfortunately then in the paint options um, we have got a skin livery for this so we've got the ripped Cuban flag livery so the light blue with the ripped Cuban flag that is actually a really nice little addition I do actually really like that um, obviously Cuba well known for the old Chevrolet Impalas and the Bel Airs and the Apache here so um, it's really nice that they've kind of given Cuba a little shout out with this thing not going to go for it but I do really like that livery um, but we have got a couple of two tones as well so in the two tones we've got a two tone yellow and uh, white which looks really nice we've got yellow uh, sorry white and purple we've got white and pink we've got white and blue and we've got orange and white my uh, naming there was very poor I had to think what I was saying but anyway you, you get the gist of it um, this is what it comes with as standard I actually think the the blue and the white looks really nice so I'm gonna go for that and it also does change the color of your sun visor there which is just something to note and I'm not gonna bother putting the interior upgrades in we saw those in the last episode so if you want to see what interior customization we have then I did some interior customization on the Warthog in the last episode um, there's nothing too serious it's all pretty pretty boring to be honest so I'm not gonna bother with that today but anyway the Chevrolet Apache I've never driven this vehicle um, I did a sort of test run before the last episode and I haven't done a test run today I don't know how the Chevrolet performs I've never driven this vehicle before um, so I don't know if we're gonna be even able to complete the challenge today but what is the challenge um, well if you haven't seen the previous episode basically we need to travel through four of the Michigan maps in under 30 minutes uh, it sounds like quite an easy task the Michigan maps aren't too difficult and I have no doubt that the Chevrolet Apache will be able to cross all of them but in under 30 minutes that is where the challenge is now in the last episode we managed to cross it in about 27 minutes that was in the brand new Warthog that was a pretty good vehicle um, I was impressed with that thing it did skate around on the road a little bit so today we're gonna see if we can try and beat the Warthog with the Chevrolet Apache and before we do that let me just show you all the route that we're gonna be taking so we're going to be starting in Black River, starting at the um, garage in Black River. We're going to be traveling across the bridge, through the town, out the other side and to Smithsville Dam. And then in Smithsville Dam we're going to head from the gateway up towards the garage, past the garage, past the farm, over the dam, then past the quarry and down into the swamp and towards the island lake gateway. 
And then once we get into Island Lake, we're going to take a little um, left turn down towards the sawmill. And then we're going to follow that path all the way along the very bottom of the map, all the way up to the Drummond Island gateway. And then the final map that we have to cross is the Drummond Island map. This is the biggest one. We pop out of the island lake there at the very bottom. We have to travel right all the way along towards the fuel station. Then we snake through the middle of the map all the way up to the port in the top right corner. And the gateway into the port, the sort of barrier, to enter the port is the finish line there so it's quite a long route um, we drove it in the last one in 27 minutes as I said uh, so that is the time to beat we're gonna see if we can at least do it in under 30 minutes I have uh, faith that the Apache can beat the 27 minutes um, but I guess we'll just have to see uh, but before we do all that I just want to uh, show you all one thing before we set off on our little challenge today right so we're outside in black river here uh, just at the trailer store and i just wanted to test whether we can actually tow a trailer with this thing we're not going to be in the challenge but just in case you can and unfortunately no you're not able to pull a trailer with the brand new apache so um that's a little bit of a downside i mean you do pay extra money for this thing so you'd at least expect them to add a tow bar to the thing but unfortunately that isn't an option so i thought i'd just uh, show you all that in case you are wondering whether to buy the apache or not then it doesn't have a tow bar so that is something to bear in mind okay so i've turned the engine off we're all set to go in the apache you all know the route we're going to be taking i've got my phone stopwatch ready so i can commentate on the time um as i did with the warthog i'm going to have a little timer going underneath the face cam so you can all see how we're doing on progress and what progress we're making as we go along um but yeah let's just get this thing started so as soon as i start the engine that is going to be it the timer will start so in three two one and go the engine has started and we are away now we do have um quite a bit of uh fuel in this thing it does have 95 liters of fuel uh, which is nice um, we also have permanent diff lock which is really useful um, so even when we're driving in automatic we have diff lock which is uh, quite unique among the scout vehicles not many of the scout vehicles actually have that so that's really cool we also have switchable all-wheel drive which is obviously really useful I'm going to be trying to drive with all-wheel drive off as much as I can um, just to conserve uh, fuel we are allowed to use all-wheel drive um, that's not out of the question um, but just to conserve as much fuel as possible I'm going to be driving without it where possible and um, we do obviously have a little bit of extra fuel just in case we do start to run a bit low um, we are allowed to stop at fuel stations along the way that wasn't great by me we shouldn't have switched it off then uh, but yeah we are allowed to run um, we are allowed to go into fuel station sorry and fuel up if we are running low um, we're not allowed to recover the vehicle if we roll so if i roll over i'm not allowed to recover the vehicle i have to go and get another truck to roll me back over um, which is obviously going to eat into my time and quite frankly if i roll then that is game over there's no way i'm going to beat the time of the warthog if i actually roll over because by the time i've got a truck we're going to eat in a lot of time so we're going to try our best not to roll over i do have the autonomous scout winch so if we do roll i can flip myself if there is some trees around or something to winch to um so that is one good thing now the apache is not the fastest truck in the world i'd say it's about similar speed to the warthog we tested in the last episode um obviously the mud tires here aren't great on the road so this first little section is mainly on the road you might see a little bit of sliding around but i have to say already it feels a lot better than the warthog it's not sliding around as much it seems a lot more stable on the road 
and I also didn't go for the roof rack because that reduces our um, top end heaviness, stops us from rolling over, makes us a little bit more stable. So, in case you're wondering, that is why I didn't go for that. And uh, as we saw in the last episode, I have gone ahead and uh, cleared all the paths. So we have a straight run, there's no obstacles to go around. I've cleared all the rock faces, built all the bridges, cleared all the landslides, everything like that that would hinder us. Um, I have gone ahead and cleared. So we have a straight run all the way to the Drummond Island port. There's no um, annoying obstacles that we have to find another route around. So it's just going to be one straight path all the way to the port. Right, okay, we're coming up to the Drummond Island gateway right here. We're just approaching the five minute mark now. Um, so we're about on track, uh, we're very similar to in the Warthog. Obviously when we go through the loading screens like we have now, the timer will pause because this um, is not counted into the run um, because loading times can vary from time to time, uh, from sort of console to console. I don't have the most powerful PlayStation, it's not a Pro, it's just a normal one and I also don't have the best internet connection so loading times could vary a little bit so I'm not going to um, have the timer running in there and it does stop the engine every time we load into a map like now so the timer won't start again until I start the engine so as soon as I start the engine there we go the timer has begun once again and um, we're now onto our second map, so we're five minutes in, already onto our second map. It sounds like we're making a good progress, and um, I'd say we're on similar lines to the uh, Warthog so far, but the swamp section in the Smithfield Dam, as we saw in the last episode, actually chews up a lot of your time. You can spend a lot of time fighting around in the swamp. Um, I think last time I spent about 10 minutes getting through that swamp area so that does eat a lot of your time. The other maps aren't too bad to go across so um, yeah we'll just see how it goes. So far we are pretty much matching the Warthog on, um, on pace. We're going past the Smithville Dam garage now. Um, fuel wise we're not looking too bad. We've still got just over half a tank left so not too bad on that front I think we're gonna make it probably to the Island Lake Gateway and then we may have to fuel up once again um, we are also allowed to fuel up at the fuel stations as I mentioned um, which there is one in Drummond Island that we had to fuel up with the Warthog so we may see that again but luckily that is right on the path that we're gonna be taking so that is not not too bad nothing to worry about there right we're just going across the dam now um, we're approaching the eight minute mark now and you can see already this thing's not wandering as much as the warthog it's a lot more stable um, which is obviously a nice thing now one thing that I've seen quite a few people complaining about with this thing is the turning circle um, a lot of people have said that the turning circle is quite bad and from videos I've seen sort of trying to prove that the turning circle is quite bad but when you're driving it like this I I've not really seen any issues with it it doesn't seem too bad if you're going like around a tight bend it might be a little bit annoying um, but so far I've not seen any issues with that um, we've got to watch with this bit here. No, we don't see any rolling. That section there going past the quarry can roll you um, if you're not careful. This thing does feel very uh, like stable. Um, it feels like all the weight is down below. So it doesn't really want to topple too much. Obviously, six wheel drive and we've got six heavy tyres on the base of this thing. So that is actually providing a lot of downforce. Um, which is actually not a bad thing um, but let's see how those tires do in the swamp now um, we are going to cut off as much of the swamp as possible so I am allowed to take this little route round here which I know is actually nicer 
We do have um, low range, low plus and low minus, which is obviously really useful. Now we have to stick as close to the path as sort of possible, um, but for this section going through here, this is a slightly faster route that I am taking, so we are allowed to we are allowed to deviate from the path slightly, but we're not allowed to take massive detours, we're not allowed to take massive shortcuts and cut out big parts of the map. Um, so we are going to follow this path as much as possible. Now we're down to 8 litres, I am going to have to stop here, I'm going to do this as quick as I possibly can, that was the wrong thing. And that is all the fuel gone now. We can't completely fill this thing. Hopefully we have enough fuel to at least make it to the um, fuel station in Drummond Island. Um, I do have, I think, one uh, fuel trailer dotted around in Lake Island that we may have to just stop at. Um, but so far not too bad. We're coming up to the 14 minute mark in a moment um, So as I said, this has chewed up quite a lot of time We've um, taken a lot longer to get through this map than we did with the Black River map, but you can see why this bog has really given us a bit of hassle so Yeah This thing also is quite an amusing horn It's um it sounds like a very, very small car with that horn, but this is in fact a very large truck. I mean, the Chevrolet Apache on its own is a large truck, and when you convert it to a 6x6 like this, it makes it even bigger. But anyway, we've made it to the um, Lake Island map, Island Lake. I can never remember which way around it is. The timer is going to be paused once again as we load into this map. Um, which it is um, taking a while to do and we are loaded into the map once again um, as soon as I start the engine the timer will unpause there we go the timer is unpaused and we are off now we're going to take a left down here towards the log station and then we're going to follow it all the way up the sort of left hand side of the map or along the bottom as I showed you earlier it is the nicest way to get across this map uh, at least in my opinion anyway um, but these bridges up here that we're going to cross in a minute I obviously had to build them for this speed run but if you haven't built them they are a nightmare to build because the path to get to the other side of this sort of bog section is really really small so you actually have to use a scout vehicle to sort of deliver the wood for these bridges here um, but it's also a very horrible path it's very small it's very sort of tippy um, it can tip your trucks very easily um, and um, yeah but yeah, I really like the look of the Chevrolet Apache. I think it's a really nice looking truck. Um, in case you're wondering, this is not actually a 6x6 in real life. Um, so the Chevrolet Apache was not a 6x6 truck from the, from the factory, from the store. Um, it was just a 4x4 sort of normal Chevrolet pickup. Um, but for whatever reason the SnowRunner devs have made it into a 6x6. I'm not complaining I think it looks awesome as a 6x6 obviously six wheel drive makes it even better off road um, and yeah I think it's a really nice looking truck it's a shame it can't pull a trailer if it could pull a trailer I think this thing would definitely be worth the price um, in my opinion, it is worth the price. I mean, £3.29, you could probably find that in your car somewhere, just under the seat. So, um, it's not a ridiculous asking price for this truck. It is a bit annoying that it's not included in the season pass, because people like myself that have paid extra for the season pass will be a bit annoyed by that. Um, but for 329 I don't think it's a bad purchase. It's very capable off-road. It looks awesome. It can't tow a trailer, but I think we can gloss over that thing. Um, I think, in my opinion, it is the best-looking Scout vehicle. Um, I'm a big fan of 
classic vehicles, especially classic American pickups. And uh, when you go for the off-road look with them, I think it looks even better. So definitely a thumbs up for me. I'd recommend that you purchase this thing if you haven't. Um, but let me know in the comment section. Are you going to buy the Chevrolet Apache? Do you think it's worth the asking price? Um, let me know down there. But anyway, we're coming on to the Drummond Island gateway now. We're going to pause the timer. We're at 19 minutes at the moment on my stopwatch. Um, you'll have a more accurate timer on your screen. Um, mine is purely for commentary purposes. So I can comment basically where we are. Uh, but the timer on your screen will be a lot more accurate. So, we are loaded into the Drummond Island map. Um, we have got one sneaky little shortcut that I am going to take on this map. We've got 33 litres of fuel left. Hopefully that's going to be enough to make it to the uh, fuel station. So, let's fire the thing up. There we go. And the timer is started once again. Um... Now, when I say sneaky shortcut, um, there is a little shortcut that we're going to take through the log station, which is just to my right over here. Um, it's not actually a shortcut. Um, it is on the path. You know, it is a perfectly legal path that we are allowed to take. Uh, whoa, that is not an angle I really want to be at. We're going to go for some low plus. I did go through that sort of mud bog in the warthog and it seemed to be okay this thing feels a little bit down on power to fit through there so um, that is why I went round it this is the log station here on the Drummond Island map so we're going to just skirt through here it cuts off a little bit of the map around the coast side there um, so yeah now there is this little trailer here, I don't know whether it has any fuel in, but we're only down to 22 litres, which is not massive. Um, so yes, it does have some in, we're going to refuel from that, um, which we're perfectly okay to do. Um, that trailer was parked there, we're allowed to use all of the resources available to us, and now I think we have enough fuel to make it all the way to the port, we don't need to stop at the fuel station. Um, we have to go through it anyway because it's on the path but I wasn't sure whether we we're going to make it there and I don't want to run out of fuel when we've made it this far we are coming up to the 21 minute mark uh, that's what we are at, at the moment um, so I think now we are slightly ahead of the warthog um, I can't quite remember where we were at with the warthog here um, but this thing feels slightly ahead now um, if we can keep this pace up, then I think we may have a shot at beating the Warthog's time. Another big part of this challenge as well is actually knowing the maps. Now, I've driven this route quite a few times um, just to sort of get it in my head for the speedruns. Um, but knowing the map is also a massive part. You've got to know which bits have got boggy bits, you know, where you need to stick to the side of the path um, where you're going to find the most speed it's very much like taking a racing line on a racetrack you've got to know when to take the apex when to not uh, you know you need to know when to put the power down and it's very much the same here you need to know where the boggy parts are and where you need to avoid parts so we're going down this like snaky part down that hill right there. It does seem to be a lot more controllable this thing. It does feel very planted. Um, it's a nice truck to drive. Uh, not when you get too much speed like that though. Um, it seems to like going on the road a lot more which I mean this is an off-roading game so that's not always the greatest thing. Um, it hasn't really struggled too much with this path to be honest. Uh, most of this path that we have left is quite hard ground so we can go flat out we're nearly at 26 minutes so we've got just under a minute to try and beat the warthog's time um, obviously the time might be slightly different on your screen you will have the accurate screen time um, so even if we don't beat the warthog on my timer we may beat it on the actual screen timer 
so I won't know this till I obviously edit the video but we are coming to the port there it is to my right really not that far to go now we're at 26 and a half minutes at the moment on my timer I think we are going to beat the Warthog's time just if we can do it in 20, under 27 minutes on my timer, then I will know that we have beaten the Warthog. And across the line there, it is under 27 minutes. Um, I have 26.55. You will all have the accurate time on your screen. I don't know what that is until I've edited this video. But we can confirm that the Chevrolet Apache has completed the Michigan speedrun in less time than the warthog so the chevrolet apache is a faster truck than the warthog and um, it's a little bit controversial to be honest because um we have different upgrades going on we have um slightly different routes you know some parts i might have avoided in this run that i didn't avoid in the other run but it's just a little bit of fun i wanted to see if the chevrolet apache could beat the warthog with the warthog is a very capable truck and uh, the chevrolet apache obviously a brand new dlc vehicle and it has beaten the warthog so i can confirm to you all that the chevrolet apache is a very capable off-road truck it's complete the michigan speed run in under 30 minutes and also beaten the warthog um has loads of awesome customization as we've seen it looks fantastic in my opinion unfortunately can't tow a trailer but there we have it the chevrolet apache an awesome vehicle if you haven't got it yet i definitely recommend you go and pick it up um, but that is going to do it for this video i hope you have enjoyed if you want to see more of these speed runs then make sure you subscribe and like the video but that is going to do it for me i'll see you all in the next episode <laughs>